So this morning, I'm going to come in becoming unstuck. Becoming unstuck. Sometimes people desire and are frustrated by stagnation. And if you have experienced some kind of stagnation in your life, um, you know that stagnation is frustrating. Um, I'm a pastor, so I will give you experiences as a pastor. I will give you experiences from when I was also doing the furniture business. So as a pastor, we're going to start this church for six months. We just asked about six people attending this prayer meeting in this tiny hotel. And I thought about how to get more people to attend. And um, no matter what I did, we will not grow beyond six. And it was a frustrating experience for me because I was hoping that we'll get to a certain number and start the church. But it didn't happen. I remember that there was a Sunday, there was a day I said, okay, we're always six. So I said, if I invite two more people, we'll go to eight. So I brought two people, and guess what? That same day, two of the regulars did not come. Then one day I said that, you know, and that went off a long while. I said, okay, this is a trick. I'm the sixth person. I'll always be here. I'm going to bring five new people because at least if any of the regulars will not come, at least we'll just get like seven or eight. So that day I brought five new people, and ladies and gentlemen, all the five regulars did not come. So it's almost seemed as if we were stuck at six. And I'm saying so because there are some of you here, you feel stagnated. You run a business, and you just cannot break through from that 20 or 50 million era monthly turnover. Some of you, it's a fact that you seem to be praying for something. It's just not gone the way you want. You've been at a job for four to five years, and there is no promotion. And that is extremely frustrating. You have hoped that certain things will happen, and they've not happened. So when we talk about becoming unstuck, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you look at your life. This is not exactly where you projected you will be right now. You thought you will be somewhere else right now. So you look at those things, you know, and sometimes people desire and, and, and are frustrated. If you don't get frustrated by stagnation, you are abnormal. Praise the Lord. Yeah, everybody gets frustrated by stagnation. As a pastor, I also get frustrated by stagnation. And um, Jesus said something powerfully in Matthew 17 verse 20. And in this instant, the, a, a girl had a demon, a, devil, a demonic spirit, and they were trying to cast out the demonic spirit from the girl. And when they were doing that, the, the demon did not respond to their prayers. Then they brought the girl to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ removed the demon from the girl. And um, Jesus said something very powerful here. And the apostles came and said, why couldn't, we, why couldn't we do that? And this is the first thing I want to see. Every time you've done what the Bible says, prayed, done what the Bible says, and it seems as if things are not working, before you get frustrated, I want to just give you one counsel. Go to God in prayer. And forget what you ask for. And just say, Lord, what is it that I'm missing out here? It's the prayer of inquiry. What is it that I'm missing out here? I've been praying a lot for this career to go forward. I've done everything I have to do. I've sown, I've prayed, I've done everything. It doesn't seem to go. Because sometimes there's a missing link you're not aware of. But otherwise you are praying and you are praying and, you know, and, you know, and um, nothing seems to be happening. So they came to me, Jesus Christ, and said, Lord, what is it? This makes me remember a certain lady. She didn't have a child in this church, and um, she had been praying and praying and praying that she have a child, and she had this concept, and said, okay, Lord, what should I do? And God said, will you consider changing your diet? And within three months of changing her diet, she got pregnant. Sometimes, the way we are taught prayer is that I can just dump it on God. I have no part to play in it. He's going to do it either I do something or not, and that's not prayer. Sometimes when God answers your prayer, it begins to walk through you also. Someone say hallelujah. So, you know, um, so we're, to we're, we're talking about this person. And they asked Jesus and said, hey, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said something very powerful. He said, the reason why you could not pass, cast out the demon is because of your unbelief. And that struck me. Maybe the reason why you're not able to raise the fund is because of your unbelief. Maybe the reason why you're not able to break that barrier in business is because of your unbelief. Maybe the reason why that marriage is struggling is because of your unbelief. Maybe the reason why you're not able to push that addiction and break the power of that addiction is because of your unbelief. Maybe the reason why that thing you desire in your life has not happened is because of your unbelief. Because what unbelief does is this. Unbelief sets the limit on what God can do in your life. The Bible says, as Jesus Christ said, that the man said, I believe, but help my unbelief. And Jesus Christ stepped in and stepped into it and did something very significant. And I'm saying to you that your faith has huge potentials. 
Your faith will put a ceiling on your goals. Let, 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 let's read the scripture together. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. Your faith is going to put a ceiling on your goal. You will not be able to do beyond your faith. Do you have the slides and the, as I'm teaching? Okay. Your faith is going to put a limit beyond your goal. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19. Hebrews 3, verse 19. See what the Bible says here. So we see that they could not enter in. What enter in? They could not enter into the promise of God. They could not enter into the fullness of what God had for them. They could not enter into God's plan. Why? Not because God did not like them. Not because God did not choose them. They could not enter in because of their unbelief. Someone said, what is unbelief? Unbelief is, will be like the opposite of faith. is the refusal to believe. Look at verse, chapter 4, verse 1. This, it extends to chapter 4, verse 1. Just, just flip. It says, let us death for fear. Let's have this reverential fear. What's reverential fear? Let us also fear. Um, just one minute. All those people coming forward, can you send them forward? Is there a reason why you put them at the back? All right, thank you. It says, let us also fear, lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So, because when something happens, people are quick to say, it's not the will of God that I should have it. But the Bible says you should be fearful because a lot of people live their life falling short. So God intended for them to have an 80%. But they end up having what? A 50%. And they fell short not because God is not kind and good. They fell short because of their capacity to believe something. Listen to me. Your capacity to believe is, is limiting your potentials. Your capacity to believe is limiting your goal. This is 2020. You can afford to enter 2020 with the unbeliefs of 2019. Why? Whatever stopped you in 2019, those unbeliefs will stop you again in 2020. So you enter into 2020 and say that, you know, maybe, maybe, I thought I'll get married last year, it didn't happen, whatever, I, I didn't even care again. And God says, that's it. You enter and say that, you know, <laughs> I couldn't raise the capital last year, I couldn't raise it again. That unbelief is there. He says, you should be careful. You should be careful. Oh, glory to God. You know, it, it's amazing because when we teach about faith, faith is a spiritual concept, but faith is a natural concept. It's also a natural concept. Someone as, someone as secular as Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison tested for the light bulb. Is it 5,000 times or 1,000 times before it came up? What? Is it 1,000? What? It's about 1,000. Do you imagine this guy, God did not speak to him. He just believed that he can create a light bulb and kept on it 1,000 trials. I want to ask you, the things you've given up on, has it been up to 1,000 times you tried? But this guy, God did not even speak to him. God did not even speak to him. He just thought, I could do this. There are people, there are, there are ladies and guys under the side of my voice. You had maybe two or three breakups. You say, I'm done with marriage. You are too young to be done with marriage. Put on your shoes and fall in love again. There are people under the sound of my voice. You've lost, you know, you've, you, you've, you said two or three businesses and you lost it. And you say that, oh, I'm done with entrepreneurship. If God has given you that grace, put up your shoes again and do something. There are people that have gone through a very terrible patch at work. Maybe there's a boss that doesn't like you. Or maybe there's, a, there's, a, there's an orchestration against you. And you say, because of that, I'm, you know, I'm just tired of working. It's too early to get tired. Just start again. You're just one year in your marriage and you're tired of it. Brother, what are you drinking at night? Sometimes to solve your marital problem, all you have to do is to stay. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of the people you really consider are good couples, like the ones you see in church, ask them. There was a time that there was a voice that it's time to go now. But the best decision they made was to stay. So if you struggle with pornography, you struggle with addiction, you, you struggle with raising capital for your business, and you've tried four or five times, that is not the reason to give up. I know you've tried four or five times to raise this one million dollars for your business, but that is not the reason to give up, because your faith can do wonders. Your faith can do the impossible. The Bible says all things are possible to him that believes. I understand there's a visa ban, but my faith is not in Nigerian government. I don't have to go to the US to excel. Even where I am, I'm like a a tree planted by the rivers of water that pierces foot in season. Everything always works out for me. Don't just sit down on the chair this morning. Go ahead and say, believe it, amen. Yeah. Glory to God. 
Because I just wonder why will you come to church and not expect God to stretch you. I wonder why you're going to settle for less. Your faith is powerful. He says, with God, all things are possible. I read of a lady that got married at 60 something. I said, my God, with God, all things are possible. And when she, God, she got married at 60 something, she was a virgin. It's a popular story. Pastor Kumwe's wife. It's a popular pastor story. She was a virgin. Hey, she just believed that I'm not going to die until I get married. Why do you give up so soon? Why do you give up so early? Why can't you hold on to your dreams? Why can't you believe that something huge can happen to you? So today, I'm only saying that the reason why you're stuck is not even because of the... See, watch what I'm saying. The reason why people get stuck in life is not because of the environment on the outside. The reason why people get stuck is because of the conditions of the heart inside. Once you move forward inside, there's no force on the outside that can stop you. The reason... So, as I'm speaking to you right now, you need to write an area where you feel stuck and ask yourself, am I stuck inside? It's time to move forward on the inside. And let me tell you something. Maybe you came for the first time. This series is going to... Str- um, this month, your faith is going to blow up. Uh, listen, it's a no messy month. I'm telling the truth. It's a no messy month. Either on Sundays or Wednesdays, your faith is literally going to blow up. If there is a month, you need to invite someone to church. This is that month. The reason why is that all your friends that are tired of life, bring them. God is going to infuse faith into their heart. And all of you that say, oh, well, I, I don't need faith. I'm doing well. Listen to me. You are so narrow-minded that you think where you are is well. God has something bigger for you. So how do you know? Because Ephesians 3 says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, far beyond what you can ask or think. I know you make a hundred million per year, but what is that compared to the fact that God wants to build ten hospitals across Africa? That's nothing. The reason why you think you're doing well is that your vision is small. When you have huge vision, you understand, my God, I need huge resources. And I don't need huge resources because I have a bigger house. I have a good house. My kids are okay. I need huge resources so that when there's coronary virus, we can put a check down and say, one million dollars for those that will protect Nigeria. Somebody say hallelujah. Because there's something, because we, we, there's so much poverty in this part of the world. So as soon as people do some well, they have a house in London, house in the Koi, house in America, I'm rich. My brother, maybe you are really broke. Huh. Hebrews chapter 6. Let's look at what faith is. <laughs> Why faith is so important. Hebrews chapter, le- chapter 11 verse 6 rather. Hebrews 11 verse 6. I'm going to read Hebrews 11 verse 6 first. Romans 1 verse 17. Oh my God. He was on says, See what the Bible says. The Bible says, but let's see, want to go? Hold on. Okay, okay, let's finish it. Let's finish it. Want to go? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that must come to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that. So, so the, the apostle lays two foundations there. But, but the first thing I want to say is that he says, without faith, you can't please God. What does that mean? If you keep attempting and living your life based on what you can do, God says you can't please me. God says for you to please me, you must step out and do things that are impossible. Faith pleases God. Faith. See, many of you are... T- oh my. Faith pleases God. I, I have two cards here. There's a Lucky Target card, and it's for the card, and some of you will know what it means. There's a Bank of America AT, um, cre- um, debit card. Um, it's a Wells Fargo debit card. And let me tell you something. No matter how much money I have in the ATM, if I go to the ATM and I don't have a credit a, a debit card, I can't withdraw money. Yes or no? It's not as if the ATM doesn't like me or likes me. Without the ATM card, without the ATM card, the ATM cannot please me. It's, it's not liking me. Without the ATM card, I cannot satisfy the requirement to withdraw cash from the ATM machine. God says, he doesn't matter if my bank is loaded with health, with joy, with peace. He's loaded with everything you desire. He says, if you do not have faith, you cannot withdraw from heaven's bank. 
if you want a baby, God says, I have it in my ATM. You want a husband, I have it in my ATM. I want to raise $5 million capital. I have it in my ATM. I want the healing for my cancer. I have it in my ATM. But without faith, you can't make a withdrawal. You can't please me. The problem is not the ATM. The problem is your ability to withdraw from the ATM. Your faith is the issue here. Romans chapter 1 verse 11, verse 17. Oh, glory to God. Romans 1 17. Someone say, I'm full of faith. Romans 1 17. See what the Bible says. Hey, it says, Very the righteousness of, of God is revealed from faith to faith. <laughs> Their dimensions in faith. He said, from faith to faith. Their dimensions in faith. He says, the next thing, as it is written, see what I'm going to say, the just shall what? Let me use contemporary word. The just as an operating system and program called faith. So what, what it is, I have, an, I have an iPhone here. If I try to download um, an Android app, it will not download, not because my iPhone is not good or the app isn't good. They are not compatible. If I force it to download, my phone will begin to malfunction. God says the reason why your life is malfunctioning is this. is because your life is meant to be lived by faith. If your life begins to malfunction, it's because you are living outside faith. The reason why your marriage is malfunctioning is because you are living outside faith. Also, how do you mean? Because when God says forgive, it has nothing to do with how you feel. It's a faith thing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. When God says forgive, he doesn't say that when your husband or wife is sorry, when your girlfriend is sorry. It's a faith thing. I, I forgive not because of you. I forgive because God says forgive. The reason why he might mean to forgive is this. If I forgive, you will take it for granted. That's fear. Because he has not taken it for granted here yet. But fear projects the fact that he will take it for granted. But listen to me. I will trust God over my wisdom. So you see, that kind of marriage begins to malfunction. Why does that marriage malfunction? Because the just shall live by faith. Your marriage is by faith. So once your marriage is not by faith, like my phone cannot use apps that not Android, it will begin to malfunction. That's why your finances is malfunctioning. That's why your business is malfunctioning. Because you are leaving that thing outside faith. It's a one without faith you can't please God. And let me tell you something. Without faith you can't. God works by faith. As a matter of fact, in the Bible... There are two stories that blew my mind. The first story is this. Jesus Christ went to his hometown. And, and when I say please God, I want to give an example of please God. When he went to his hometown, he saw very, very few people respond to the healing ministry. The Bible says, and he was amazed at what? Their unbelief or lack of faith. He was like, wow, your lack of faith is legendary. Wow, this is one book record of lack of faith. He was so shocked at the lack of faith. Then there was a man called the centurion. I love this guy. This is like my first night guy. The centurion said, oh, glory to God. What did the centurion say? He says, please, come and heal my daughter. She's very sick. He was like, oh, that's fine. And he began to put on his shoes and put on his belt. He said, what are you trying to do, Jesus Christ? Said, I'm trying to come to your house. <laughs> centurion says, you don't have to come to my house. I operate at a higher level. He says, speak the word only. And my servant, he says, and my servant, not the daughter. He says, my servant shall be healed. He says, my faith does not require touch. Listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, wow. Will you take it? Faith says it doesn't matter if other people have experienced it or not. It can, I can be the first. Because before that time, nobody had experienced that dimension of God's power. Nobody had done that. Should I help you blow your mind? Did you hear that during wine press, a guy had a degenerating eye condition, 90% blind, and if he got, got really blind, it removed to the other eye, and during the service as I was praying, he got healed, and the eye popped open. This is not a secret story. The mother is one of the, what, is the CEO of a bank, so it's not like, the mother chatted and said that, I'm amazed at the God we serve. But if you think that's freaky enough, let me give you another story. So I was all by myself and I saw this chat on my phone for one of our leaders. 
a lady in our church, a lady in our church, I believe is a lady, right? That had sickle cell. She came into the service and said that, you know, I'm believing that God can do anything. And he said, I'm believing that my genotype will change. I'm just out of the sickle cell. And she went for a test. And they found out that sickle cell was no longer SS. It was now AA. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you have a hard time believing that, I also do. But the reason why I believe that I know my God can do all things. Because my faith is not even in the pastor's prayer. My faith is in the God that the pastor prays to. Somebody say hallelujah. So the centurion, the centurion says, you don't have to come. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Oh, fantastic. And Jesus didn't speak the word. Jesus Christ said, relax, everybody. He said, I have never. The Bible says, Jesus was amazed. In that Nigerian word, wawood. He was wild. He says, he said, I've never seen this kind of faith before. He even let the servant and moved to the man's faith. I want to look at, ask a question. When God looks at your life, is he going, my God, look at the kind of faith she has. Or God is wondering at your unbelief, my God, look at how unbelieving she is. Because the two of them get a reaction. Someone says, I don't know what he's looking at. Let me tell you what he's going to look at. When God looks at what you ask for in prayers, is he challenged by your faith? When God looks at what, someone says, what, no, 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 no. When God looks at everything you asked for last week in prayer, is he challenged by your faith? No, he's not. Because he's asking for, protect me from that. Bless this photo for God's sake. As I'm going to what protect me. God says, these things, you don't even need faith to do it. He's not even impressed with the things you are asking for. Or when God looks at your prayer and says, Lord, I'm believing you for a solution that will solve the traffic problem in Nigeria. God says, I love that faith. Because that problem has been there for perennially, but now someone is believing for it. He's got wowed by your faith. I'm believing for a solution that will, solve, that will solve the financial problem of Nigeria. Because sometimes your faith is just so narrow. See, all of you here, most of us here, if God answers your prayers, you will soon realize that your prayers are negligible compared to what's happening in the world's game of things. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, the way you pray, I don't believe you serve a living God. The way you pray, I don't believe your God is big. Because you don't ask for big things. Even if you met the president of Nigeria, you were asking for bigger things than what you asked God. Am I, am I sincere? If you saw the press, if you mistakenly meet Donald Trump, you will be surprised how, and it says, blank check, ask me whatever you want. You'll be surprised you'll be able to ask Donald Trump more things than what you can ask God. Then all of a sudden it's confusing because I think your God is really powerful. But you're unable to do that. Where is your faith, people? It's, so, so, write this down. So, I want to write it down right now. When God looks at my goals and prayer requests for 2020, is he amazed at my faith or amazed at my unbelief? Write it somewhere. Put it on your phone. I want to go home and think about it. When God looks at my goals for 2020, is he amazed at my faith or is he amazed at my unbelief? Does he look at my goals and go, my goodness. Or does he look at my goals and says, <laughs> even that brother in church can do that for him. He doesn't have to pray about that. And I'm hoping that something is happening to you already. Because the thing is this. Let me tell you something. Why do you come to church? One of the benefits of coming to church is this. In church, your faith is stirred up. That's why you come to church. Because in church, you're linked to a vital relationship with the Holy Spirit. Shoot, ta, 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 ta. I love the power of God. But what it does to me, as the end of the day, God keeps expanding my faith. See, if you're born into the royal family, there are some things you never think about. Yes or no? No, talk to me. 
Just imagine you were born into the royal British family. There are some things that will never... You'll never think about how will I pay school fees? Where will I get pocket money from? See, you are born into a spiritual royal family. Why has it not affected your mind? Why has it not affected your mind? You want to start to come and say that, I want to come by the corner. Listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, Listen, I understand you want to come by the corner. That's where it starts from, but that's not its ending. We are global. Praise God. We, we are global. Whatever we do, we are global. There was a fire accident in um, VI, and two of our members, to what I know, were affected. And um, when we heard, our leaders came together and said, okay, we're going to like, give them this amount of money to help just to rebuild their business because of we're a generous church. But I spoke to one of them, and she was like, Pastor, thank you, but I'm so discouraged, I'm so depressed. I said, that's a Yoruba proverb where I come from. The Yoruba proverb says, if the king's house gets burnt, it will only get better. Meaning, if, for example, Asherah gets burnt, what will happen? The next Asherah will be superior in design and architecture to what exists. Listen, when the devil tries to destroy you or take from you, he's just creating a huge opportunity for God to do more. We are never at loss because our God can overcompensate. I know you have lost money before, but your God can overcompensate. I know you've lost time, but your God can overcompensate. Stop looking at the loss. Look at the blessing. Praise God. Stop looking at what was taken for you. Look at what is coming. Hallelujah. Joseph said, you sold me into slavery. But God sent me ahead of time to become the prime minister and prepare you for the future. If you are in church this morning and you know that 2020 is yours, say amen. amen. Glory to God. This is what you think. Oh my God. I don't think I've lost something. I said the best is yet to come. You know why? Because my God is not blind. Before the fire came, he needed to come. Before you had the divorce, God knew you had the divorce. <laughs> Glory to God. Let, let, let's get through this. Let's get through this. Are you ready for some more? So, I've told you that number one, faith pleases God. Number two, your programming system is faith. So once you stay outside of faith, you begin to malfunction. Some of you are malfunctioning. You're malfunctioning. You're malfunctioning. Oh, good, good, good. Why are you malfunctioning? Outside faith. Some of you, your marriage is outside faith. That's why it's malfunctioning. Some of you, your career is outside faith. That's why it's malfunctioning. Some of you, your relationship status is outside faith. How do you know that? When I ask you, hey, how is marriage? Pastor, I don't care. You know, I can't kill myself. That, that, that's why you are, you are malfunctioning. You are malfunctioning. Oh, really, God. Maybe some two things you can know about faith today. When I say how is business, I pass everything dry. Is that, see the budget now? Who do they care about? But your Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. I, I, I don't walk, I, I don't walk by the real, because we come from another economy. Hallelujah. No matter the hunger in the jungle, lion no go chop glass. Oh, did you hear that? No matter the Disaster in the what? In the jungle. Lion. No good job, grass. And listen, we are of the tribe of the lion of Judah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So someone says, tell me more about faith. Number one, you can't play safe and be in faith. <laughs> you can play safe and please God. Why? Because every time you say you are in faith, what is faith? Faith is, is God calling you to do the impossible. Oh my God. What is faith? Faith, because there's this, you know, there's this religious thing about faith. When they say confess 25 times, I believe in confession. And it's all a little, a, just a lot of theory. See, when you see Dubai transformed from a desert to a world nation, what do you think it was? Faith. He will not be attached to God. But it's, it's a natural human faith. Because my children, we born again, we talk too much. And the world does not respect the prayer you pray. They don't respect the, what the tongues you speak. What they respect is the result you are able to deliver. Once you deliver a result, they will ask you, who are you? Listen to me. David had played for Saul many years. 
sorry, so, David had played for so many years. Saul had never asked him before, who are you as your father? The day David pulled down Goliath, he said, call him. He said, who are you? He couldn't even remember I was the boy in the corridor. He said, where is your father? He said, where is your, where is your tribe? The reason why is that they say, where do you deliver result Through the power of the Holy Ghost, that people around you will start asking, oh, come, 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 what church do you go to? Who is your pastor? Why do you talk this way? Why do you behave this way? Because they are, there's oozing out of you such grace of God. And that's happening to you this year. Listen to me. Your lifestyle will begin to pray the gospel this year. When they see how your children are doing in school, when they see how your children are well trained, when they see how your career is going, how your company is going, they will ask you, how do you pray? That will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. What is faith? Faith can't play safe and please God. You, you can't be in faith and please God. Why? Because faith is believing and attempting what is rationally impossible. When God called Moses to step out of, to step on the river Red Sea, the Bible says, God told Moses, he said, divide the sea. Listen to me. You know, because we read the Bible in the spiritual mind, some things does not occur to us. God told a human being, divide the Red Sea. Have you gone to Somerland Bridge before and see the lagoon there and try not to divide it to just cut a small part and say, I want to move this part away? Because faith is God's call for you to do the impossible. In the medical field, you know, you're not just satisfied being a doctor. I want to do the impossible. I want to find a cure that will solve autism. That's my concern. I want to find some treatment that, that, that will cure some things. That is faith. Believe it for the impossible. Listen, it's, it, you can easily raise one million or two million, but can we add one more zero and say, instead of raising 20 million, we'll raise 200 million. That's faith. Faith is you attempting what you know you cannot do. You have circled long, long enough. You've circled long enough. It's time to go to a new level. It's time to change dimensions. It's time to move up. Listen, your company has done 30 staff and 20 million for such a long time. It's time to add one more zero. I say two billion. Someone say, hey, even the thought of it, sir. Can you see what is happening? Your faith limits your goals. Because you cannot have faith for the impossible, what happens? You begin to reduce your goals. And the reason why is that everybody loves to play safe. But nobody, nobody fulfills destiny from the comfort of safety. Nobody fulfills destiny. Anywhere you're listening from, nobody you fulfills destiny from the comfort of safety. You, you can play safe and please God. We are, see, write this down. We are called to do the impossible. We are the people, when they say it has not been done before, you say, that's me. <laughs> that's me. It's not been done before, that's me. We are called to do the impossible. As a pastor, I'm committing myself that 2020, I'm doing the impossible. Someone say amen. I, I don't know why you're quiet today. I'm doing the impossible. And let me say this to you. Lift up your head to you. You need to hear this one. <laughs> we are called to do the impossible. Listen to me. How would they know that we have God? You know, when Moses was doing miracles and the Egyptians were doing the same thing, they didn't respect him. But when he did the one they couldn't do, the Egyptians told Pharaoh, this is the hand of God. There's no way that consultative business should explode. There's no way your child from his issue should be good in maths. But they see it happen. They say, this is the hand of God. Can, can, will, you, will you receive this one? Never insult God with small thinking or safe living. You like hear what I said? Never. Listen, as a church, we will never insult God with small thinking. We will never insult God with small thinking. Some of you, the problem is the mind. Your thinking is so contracted. It's time to just expand it. Why? My God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond what they're going to ask or think. I will never insult God with small thinking. I will never insult God with small thinking or safe living. I will never insult God because what is safe more than what God has called you to do? What is more safe than that? 
Many of you are so into safety. You know, you know you, I, I want to just a little bit. Let's let, let just do this thing. He's safe. Safe is God. So also, what's the safest place in the world? Believe in the will of God. People die in their bed. I'm not going to insult God with safe thinking. Safe believing, rather. I want to be safe. I want, I want to just be safe. Because if I'm going to follow God, God is going to stretch me. And 2020, God wants to stretch you. It's your year of vision and expansion. I've come to tell you that the goals you wrote are too small. Make room for God. Too small. Make room for God. And you have a pastor. I'm not perfect hundred in faith, but I'm working hard at it. Last year, we had this piece of property that the Lecky campus had gotten. And, you know, huge. And we're trying to do a massive building, but we're not able to do it. Right now, we're on the way to get there. And I said, you know, instead of us waiting for this massive building to come, can we just get a tent that can see the thousand people just so that we can have some more room for growth in, in, in Bagada so that the Bagada people can just have some people there. And I think November, the first week of November, we started just literally three months ago. And guess what happened? Three months ago, we started. Last Sunday, that church in Antony had about 2,000 people. One guy on Instagram said, no, this is not three months old. I said, our God is able to do. See, don't mess with our God. Our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Far beyond what we can see. And as our God is so powerful, he can do. Don't limit our God. Our God is not the governor. Our God is not a doctor. Our God is the king of the universe. Our power is in his hands. That's who we serve. That's who we serve. That's what we serve. His name is Jehovah El Shaddai. His name is Jehovah Nisei. His name is Jehovah El Sabaoth. His name is Jehovah Kamola. That's what we serve. It's unfortunate you allow the world to frame your mind into what your God cannot do. They say you, your God cannot do this because doctor says you can have a child. Doctors have said what they can say. That looks like a job for El Shaddai. Listen. When you get to impossible jobs, say, that's okay. Bank says we need 500 million. That's fine. They say you need to know some people in the U.S. That's fine. They say that there's no sperm in your sperm cup. That's fine. Ovarian cyst and um, hormonal, what do you call that, hormonal stuff that, you know, that, that women, some women have. Say, that's fine. And because of this, you can't do that. Say, don't tell me what I can do. Tell me what you know. Because if you look at my body to determine what I can do, you'll be making a mistake. You need to look at me and look at who is with me. <laughs> look at me and look at what who is with me. The reason why is that what you call impossible is a job for El Shaddai. <laughs> Say that looks like a job for El Shaddai. Say that looks like a job for El Shaddai. Is it when you're 35, you can't get a great man? That looks like a job for El Shaddai. They say you need 10 million dollars to start the business. That looks like a job for El Shaddai. They say my child has Down syndrome. We can help him. That looks like a job for El Shaddai. They say this coronary virus is spreading. That looks like a job for El Shaddai. Unto him that is able to do rabasote exceedingly abundantly, far beyond what we can ask and think. Hallelujah. God is doing something in our midst. Glory to God. And this year, by the grace, let me tell you something. This year is significant for me. Because as a church, I told our leaders, I said, this year, I, we might not have all the money, but we'll be able to give out 50,000 meals this year. Free meals. I said, not just that. Our members, we're going to raise 1,000 of them to be earning 1.5 billion annually. How does a pastor do that? That looks like a job for El Shaddai. We're going to find an extra 100 and move them from their income of 10 million to 50 million. How do you do that? Making money seminar. That's one of those strategies. We're going to find some other people that are doing 50 million and say, how can we move them to 100 to 200 million? How? I don't know. I'm going to plan. But that's what my God can do. I'm not going to wait for the government. They've showed us what they can do. It's time to show them what the church can do. Somebody say hallelujah. It's, it's, it's good we have all this oil and gas, but some new oil and gas are starting. 
Thank God for KPMG and PwC, but some new consulting company. And you know, I'm tired of loving that the consulting business and your and you don't have international head office because in your mind, who your consult? Listen, until you step out, you don't see God. That's the truth. That looks like a job for El Shaddai. Oh, I don't know if I'll get married again. Put on your makeup, put on your lipstick, join the singles ministry. Say why? Is it because I'm just knowing that my mind is settled? We are looking for a baby. Go and buy baby things. Baby is coming. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. When they say that God giving goals in your office, don't run away. Say it the goals is for me. Why? I'm not alone. See, you can't play safe and be in faith. Read the stories of Hebrews 11. They couldn't. Daniel, Shadrach, Mission, they were put to lion's den. They couldn't play safe. You are playing too safe for God to step in. You need to go through things like we call the valley of the shadow of death. You need to have goals that God knows that he depends on me. When you have so, like, my, we have goals. Last Sunday, by the grace of God, last Sunday, all our churches on Lagos, we had 15,000 people. 15,000. But guess what? We're not settling. In fact, if you think our church is big, you're confused. Our church is so small because we're just starting. This year, we're starting five new churches. Our is going to cut the fire. You know, we're starting midweek service in VI. We're starting international churches. We're starting in Johannesburg, in Kenya. We're starting in Abuja. We're starting in London. We're starting in the US. Someone says, how will you fund it? I don't know, but my God, he's able. It looks like a job for El Shaddai. This year, people that have never been pregnant before are going to have twins. Hallelujah. People, people you've given rights to and you drop them off are going to call you to dedicate their houses. Hallelujah. Because my God is able. Hallelujah. My, my God is able. Hallelujah. Every time Titan offering boxes passing, you say pass. This year, it should not be passed. You put in your first check for a 10 million and say, this is my tight because my God is able. We're believing God for the impossible. I do build it. I just construct six, six flats. Uh-uh. Estate, sir. Estate, sir. Not just in Nigeria. You are building in New York. <laughs> you are building in the UK. You are building in Johannesburg. My God is able. Make room for God. Oh, wow. Let me close. Oh, glory to God. So once it's passed you know that's why i love to come to church because when you share like this i'm like full of faith but when i get to work by tuesday no in faith that's why we have midweek services and we're fasting this wednesday it's called refill you know what refill is to refill you you know why faith can leak if the bible says faith come by hearing it also means faith go ahead by hearing Hearing faith brings faith. Hearing fear makes faith go away. Some things you need to do to stay full of faith. Number one, spend time with God. You can't spend time with God that is full of faith and faith does not touch you. Someone says, how do, so someone says, well, I always spend time with God. Some of you have what they call quiet time. Quiet time is great, but this is the three things you will know if you're spending time with God. If you're spending time with God, number one, this is how you will know. Is your faith renewed? But when you come to church, if your faith is not renewed, you didn't come to church. You came for religious activity. If you come to a great church, your faith, your ability to believe God is strong. Number two, when you spend time with God, number two, what, what was, what's the next thing? Your anxiety is lower. Your fear, anxiety and worries, they come to an all-time low. How do you know if you really prayed? Are you still full of anxiety? The third thing is this. Huh. When you spend time with God, your perspective is really altered. Your perspective, what? Really altered. How do I spend time with God? Three ways to spend time with God. Number one, spend time in His Word. It's called, we call it quiet time. Every day, every day, every day. Take, take the Bible. Take the Bible and open it. Why? This is where faith comes from. Just see, God is full of faith, so his word is full of faith. As I take in the word, I get faith. Hallelujah. The problem is not that, see, the reason why is that as you go through work, things will leak your faith. That you cannot stop. What you can fix is that as they are leaking my faith, I'm refilling my faith. So the reason why you don't feel full of faith is that you stay from the Bible. 
The second thing is this. Step, spend time in prayer. And if you want to spend time with the Word, we have something called HSDC. It's our Bible course. It runs on Sundays and during the week, depending on the one you want. And you want to spend some time. And if you're struggling with faith, that's a good place to start from. That's a good place to start from. Second thing, spend time in prayer. And you know, this year, I'm taking it another level. Every Monday and Wednesday, I'm leading prayers myself on Instagram for 15 minutes. Every Monday and Wednesday. Someone says, why? I just wanted to go into the week pumped up. So when your boss says, you are such a failure, <laughs> you can keep quiet. But inside you, the spirit goes, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm a total success. Praise God, I'm a total success. I'm born for victory. Spend time in prayer. And the third thing is this. Spend time, with fel- spend time in fellowship. So I say, why? You need people that can stretch your faith, not that kill your faith. The problem is with you is that you are surrounded with people that kill your faith all the time. You leave church now, and as soon as you leave church, oh, shh, they kill your faith. When you start talking all this, they're like, ah, <laughs> Funke, even you. Even you, hey, 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 hey. what do you know? Can God answer you? And your faith goes down. Wow. Never miss a Sunday service. Never miss a Wednesday service or a midweek service. What's the next thing you do? Look for a small group. We know we have sales. Look for small groups. Look for people, five or six, that have connected to you in a small group, in a T group, in a cell. That you can call them. They said, I lost my job. They said, you lost your job. And we say, yeah, you lost your job. Ah, how will you feed your children? Just imagine, they're helping you exaggerate your fear. People say, you lost your job. Say, brother, don't worry. A better one is coming. Count it all joy when you fall into different trial and temptation. You, the people that pump up your question, when you have troubles, do you have a cell you go to? When they beat Peter and John, they beat them blue black. As soon as you get from the prison, the Bible says they went into their company, they went to their friends. Their friends did not say, Yeah, see, they, they finished also. These are, are we should follow Jesus. Also. When they went their friends, their friends says, Where are they? Let's gather hands and pray. The Bible says, as they prayed, the whole place shook. You know what the next thing the Bible says? The Bible says, and they were full of boldness. How can they beat you and be full of boldness? It's called association power. The people around you are either killing your faith or what? Boosting your faith. After service today, I, I know you don't like people, but that's why you have low faith. Get, to, get, get the number on the screen and say, hey, I stay in Ikoi, and it's still around me. I stay in Aja, and it's still around me because I want people. This evening we're going to meet. I want people around my life. I can have something. Let's start. Let's pray.